Hello, and how are you? It is Sunday night over here. And my weekend is quickly coming to a close. I'm finally getting down to doing these readings for my lovely tarot subscribers who have participated in uh, my contest um, to make their own deck. So you now have all of your cups made and all of your aces made if you've been following along and participating. Um, and uh, for the winners, I'm going to be doing three separate videos this evening, three separate readings. Um, I had a few decks here. I think I'm shuffling these ones. I think I'm going to start with uh, the first reading for some reason. I'm going to try the Vision Quest. Vision Quest Tarot. Um, and this is going to be for Alvia, who's been waiting patiently and being, <laughs> who's been gloriously um, patient with me. I'm going to tell you, this, this woman is um, <clears throat> extraordinary. I think, uh, anyways, I'm going to leave a link down below for her channel on this video. There's the backing for the cards. I'm going to leave a link down below for uh, her channel. Um, I think the most obvious one would be to leave the link that, um, you know, that was her submission for this contest. However, I think really um, her channel is worth looking at. She's really artistic. Uh, she's continued to make, um, you know, cards, tarot cards. And now she's working on the Major Arcana, I think. So, uh, yeah, definitely take a look at her channel. I think you're really going to enjoy it. She's worth watching. She's very interesting. And I wish I had, oh my God, I wish I had a bit of her talent, her artistic. She's just skilled. She's just skilled. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to do a little reading here for Alvia. Now, Alvia also um, asked me a couple of questions. So I'm going to be focusing on... On her questions, it's basically a relationship reading. Um, I have my candles here, and this is uh, this is Indian silk. This is a really really beautiful uh, scarf that was given to me years ago, and it stays in my drawer. So this is, although I've tried a few times to put it around my neck and find some ways to make it fashionable, it's it doesn't get used, and so. Um, I'm really happy to be able to use it today, and I think it makes a really great tarot reading cloth. So, the uh, spread that I'm going to be using, I'm going to use uh, five cards. And as for their positions, it really, um, it really depends on their relationship to each other as I, as I see them. So, they speak to me. As, uh, as I put them down. Um, if you watch my channel, I don't do a lot of prediction. I don't uh, prophesize, you know, what's going on in your life or what will be happening in your life and uh, tell you that you're going to be, you know, buying a car in such and such a time or selling your house or you're going to win a lottery or anything like that. I don't do any prophesizing. But I do um, help with problem solving. So the ten, I tend to try and focus um, a lot on sort of like the development of the self and problem solving and personal goals. So I put a bit of a spin on the on the readings that way. Okay. So Alvia. First card. Oh lovely. Spirit guide. So this is card number twenty. I'm going to try and put these. They're going to be rather close together. This is a little booklet that comes with the deck. Put that up there. And the Ten of Fire, which speaks of oppression. Here, uh, the card 20 talks about the spirit guide. And you can see how it relates to the uh, the Rider-Waite-Smith. 
The Four of Water. Four of Water. And let's look at that. How lovely. So that would be like the Four of Cups. This would be the Ten of Wands. And the Four of Cups talk, or Four of Water talks about abundance. The five of water, and this is where uh, we speak of loss. And the father of water. Now, I'm going to put this beside, but I'm trying to fit them all in the screen, so he's going to go above. Okay. So, just by looking at this uh, up front, what we see is that there's um, very little. I mean, you have three cards here that are focusing on water. So. Um, this is a very emotional sort of a, a reading, or a reading that focuses more on emotion, uh, and it is it is really uh, no wonder because the questions that Alvia asks are uh, emotionally related. So, so uh, Alvia, you're saying what is the energy around my current relationship, and do I have any advice? around that. So here, um, I guess maybe I should start from the very beginning rather than just kind of going straight to the, um, you know, the, the crux of the matter here, which is talking more specifically about your questions, because we do have a bit of a preamble. So the world card, which is essentially what this 20 is speaking about. Oh, sorry. The judgment. I'm thinking world. This is your judgment card. This is you're having an awakening, an epiphany. You're basically having here some kind of an awakening spiritually. Um... That tends to be a quite an airy sort of a card because you're looking at things intellectually and you're looking at things spiritually. So, Alvia, it looks as though you have a bit of something that is brewing in your life right now that you have an opening or a road that is out in front of you. And here I see it also uh, with the writers. So you're in a group of writers, you are leading people uh, because of your ability to see what lies ahead. And people are following you. You are the guide. You are not only the, the only guide, you are being guided. So here you have a spirit guide. You have divine sort of leadership coming into your life, telling you where to go and how to get there. You're also, in turn... Um, leading the people who are following you. And people are more than happy to follow you. Um, let's see now. Um, it's kind of um, a calling. A calling. So you are following the voice that you hear from within. And that is your spirit guide. Perhaps you've gone through some trials and tribulations and there's some sort of um, a, an answer that you have come across. And that is where we look at the card called judgment, which would be the equivalent here. However, judgment sometimes can feel very blaming uh, quite often judges try and make sure that so that there's a speedy resolution that both sides have to lose something uh, because they weren't able to resolve um, issues amongst themselves. Here with the spirit guide, it's not so much a judgment. 
in, in this deck, which is something that I like very much because instead of looking to the answer by, you know, by somebody who has a gavel, somebody who can, who can decide for you because the parties involved cannot decide for themselves, so you hand it, your power over to somebody else with a black robe, that sort of a situation. In this situation, you are turning to the spirit guide for guidance. Um, and so you're finding the answers from a higher source, a higher power, but it's not necessarily a human higher power. It's a celestial being. And so your answers tend to be a lot more um, insightful, a lot less judgmental, and um, more open-ended. So that, I see that as a very positive road ahead uh, for you, Alvia. Um, here... Here is the Ten of Fire. Now, the Ten of Fire is basically the Ten of Wands, right? And what do we see here? If you can see on the bottom, it's talking about oppression. Now, when we talk about the Ten of Wands, um, traditionally, we're looking at a burden. And that, that relates to oppression. Um... This is where you're finding a hindrance or something that is really, really heavy on your mind and, uh, you know, becoming more of a, a, a labor than a labor of love. You do have some direction and um, you're moving forward, although here... Here, things seem to be very, very stagnant. You see some fire. Traditionally, we'd see, you know, the, the burden card is, you know, you're still moving, although you have a, a lot on your back. Here, you have a sign of death. This um, the skull is there and really kind of looking like you are at a standstill here. But the fire is still burning. Uh, there's still some embers there. There's still some possibility and we also kind of see the sun um, setting in the background. Where the sun sets in the background, I'm, I'm saying that it's setting in the background because uh, it could be rising, but it looks more like a sunset here. The end of the day. Now, the end of the day always means that this is the close of this cycle. This is a number 10, so it's the close of this cycle. So, um, however, you always know that you can always come back into the next day and start again. So whatever the burden is that you are carrying right now, um, you can. this is the time where you can lay it at the feet of your spirit guide and ask for help. And know that if you lay it down and you put it to rest, tomorrow there will be another beginning. And you will have guidance in how to you know, look at your problem, look at it, and, and solve that burden, solve that oppression that you're feeling. Uh, when you look at this oppression, you also want to kind of think of uh, a period of stagnation. Um, it could be some, some anger, some aggression that is um, kind of moving inward so that you're feeling it on inside, inside, and you uh, don't quite know what to do with that level of energy. <clears throat> and so perhaps you fear having to lose something. Um, so there's, there's, you're angry at your, it's possible that there's anger that's um, turned inward for yourself and a fear of loss. But whatever the oppression or the burden is, lay it you know, let it kind of burn with the ember, let it burn out, fizzle out, and then the next day, look at it again with fresh eyes. And this is not necessarily the next day, Alvia, where you sleep and the next morning you wake up and everything is, is all anew. It could be that whatever it is that is you're looking at in this relationship, the energy in this relationship, it may be coming to a close. It may be... Um, that the relationship itself is being terminated. Um, <clears throat> and it could be also that the, the burdens, if you're working things out with your partner, 
the burdens in your relationship are coming to a close because, because perhaps you are working them out together. Although here I'm seeing a very, um, like a, a feeling of oneness rather than togetherness here. You're kind of on a journey to go elsewhere. Uh, and you're facing the death of something quite on your own. It's feeling more of a burden than anything else. And I think perhaps you are looking to something else in the horizon. Pardon me as I drink some water. <clears throat> quite often I find that when people come and ask about uh, their relationship, <clears throat> sometimes there's already something in this uh, within the relationship. And... Um, and seeking advice about relationships sometimes can indicate that you're looking for that validation about moving on and getting out of it. But I'm not saying that that's the, you know, necessarily what you're talking about here. <clears throat> if I were to guess, though, I think so far the two first cards are kind of giving me an end to the relationship or an end to something significant within it because it's burdening you. And you are listening to your inner voice. So the four of water, these last four cards, so this is the third, fourth, and fifth card that we have <clears throat> here. And they are all kind of talking about the emotional component of your journey right now uh, with, the, with the, you know, the focus on your relationship. So... The four is a card that uh, is a number of stability. We know this. So uh, when we look at the four of water, we're looking at stability within the relationship, either a relationship with yourself or a relationship with someone else. So given that your uh, question has to do with a relationship with someone else, I'm going to give, I'm going to attribute that, your focus onto that card. So there has been um, a stability in your relationship. Um, and in that way, it feels complete. Uh, there has been little change. Uh, you felt settled. <clears throat> Perhaps it is that uh, you've come to the end and it is concluding and it is settled and it's closing. It could be that the uh, stability in the relationship itself uh, is that the, the changes that you have in the beginning of a relationship are over. Those changes in the beginning are sometimes very honeymooning and very chaotic because you're sort of finding your bearings. Um, so in this, in this instance, it looks like uh, perhaps you may even just be settled into um, a comfort that um, the comfort doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad thing, like complacency and a lack of change. We, we don't necessarily need to always have things to be chaotic and changing for them to be good. Sometimes that stability can mean that you have someone that you know that you can rely on and that you can predict um, with 100% accuracy what they're going to say and what they're going to do, which, is all, which can be a really good thing which can be a very, you know, um, satisfying thing because you know that that relationship is there for you. So that looks like something that has been quite satisfying for you for, for quite some time, this stable relationship. And it's given you some emotional gratitude. <coughs> Here in the background, it looks again like you have um, a nighttime sort of a scene. Uh, uh, and it's very calm. And somehow there are some clouds that are, that are, you know, that want to be red. For some reason, uh, quite often when I come across this card, I don't even see the clouds. But the clouds um, look quite wispy and, are, and, I'm, and I'm picking up on them for some reason with this reading. And I think they're sort of obscuring the view of, of the moon, the moon which has clarity. So I don't, um, I'm not sure if that's, the stability is kind of giving some, um, is obscuring your view. But um, anyways, I'm just going to leave that symbolism sit there for a moment and move on to this card here. Oh, and by the way, uh, one of the caption words here I've written down um, on this card is abundance. 
And so along with the stability that you see here with the number four is abundance. Uh, the, the emotions are full. Um, there's nothing lacking there. You have more than you need. Here, the five of water, the five of cups or the five of water, again, you have another nighttime scene, but the night is very clear. So the message is clear in this, in this card. The clarity in this card uh, is about the loss. As you can see, that's the, the, the word that we see down below on the bottom there is the loss. And you can liken that to um, that sense of grief that you feel with the uh, right or right <clears throat> card where you have the two cups. You have your back to the two cups and you're not really looking at what you have. You're more focused on the cups that are spilt over, that are cracked over. Um, so here in this in this reading, what you have is uh, a bit of loss and a bit of grief that you're anticipating. <clears throat> this is more happening in in future, but it's more of um, the grief that you anticipate. And that you're looking at, which is probably, which could be one of the reasons why you're bringing up the question. Um, so let's just take a peek here. <coughs> um, is there anything else that I can say? Five of water. You may have, uh, maybe you're looking back and seeing a bit of regret. Now that can mean that you are you want to mend some of, um, you know, that, those emotional losses as well. It doesn't mean that they have to be broken. This is just symbolism. So you may want to be mending <clears throat> some of the losses that you felt. Um... Here, the father of water, just in this deck, it is more uh, the, the page, sorry, the king. Because they have the father, the mother, the son, and the daughter. So this is the father, so this is the king of, uh, of water, of cups. Here we have um, some sensitivity. Someone who has the wisdom. He also has resources here and peace. So there's an abundance here of emotion. You see the water flowing in the back. You see he's the one with the resources. He's feeding your soul. <coughs> he's the one who's got all of the, um, the perception. The uh, Psychically, he's quite in tune with anything that you know. He has that that knowing uh, he understands you very much emotionally now if this is the person who uh, is the object uh, you know the, the person that you're involved with and it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a man it can be both a man or a woman but this is the card that's coming <coughs> my throat is really giving me a bit of a, a problem <coughs> but this um, seems to be giving you the message it's the message not necessarily the gender so uh, this person is bringing you uh, much emotion, much abundance, and a sense of peace that is coming in there. And this person understands you psychically very well. Um, so that sort of looks at the first question that you asked, Alvia, where you say, what is the energy around your current relationship? This is kind of what I'm seeing that there has been burden, that you're looking for some direction, and that you, you're finding it with your, your inner wisdom, that this relationship has been nourishing for you and abundant for you and stable. Um, something about the relationship has, uh, you're looking at some losses, perhaps more losses than gains, and this is kind of where you're, you're at, uh, so kind of like a crossroads, it sounds like. And it's going to be very difficult for you to leave uh, this person, this object of your love, just because of the stability, <clears throat> despite the burdens within the relationship, uh, this person has been a resource for you. What I would say to you, aside from the reading, Alvia, is to kind of really get a paper and pen 
sort of exercise going and write down, uh, you know, really write down in point form both sides of the argument. <coughs> For instance, if you're looking at leaving the relationship, what would that be like? What are the pros? And the other side is what are the cons? So what would that be like? Do you really want to leave that relationship altogether knowing that you it's going to dissolve completely? And on the other side, uh, is staying in the relationship more beneficial to you? Um, or is it taking more from you? Is it more of a bad burden to you than anything else? And I think with that way, you can look into your own inner wisdom and balance things things out that way. Um, I don't necessarily kind of give advice <clears throat> and tell you what to do, but uh, the cards quite often will come up with ideas that help you to pick out pieces out of the puzzle and help you to sort of objectively sort of um, look at the symbolism and it creates pictures in your mind so that you can maybe make the pieces fit better together in your own life. <coughs> Ultimately, you're making the decision yourself. So, and of course you would know that. Um, I hope that this has been uh, helpful. I hope that this has been at least interesting. Um, and um, if you wanted to uh, you know, leave some comments down below, uh, please feel free to do so. I certainly um, welcome that. Okay? So I'm going to go and take care of my throat. <laughs> and I hope that this evening finds you well. Take care now and have a good evening.